Hello, welcome to the Thursday, October 18th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from McLean, Virginia. Today we got yet another example why it's so important to watch for any code that you are including from third-party sites in your website. The latest example here comes from New Share Counts. New Share Counts was sort of a Twitter plugin button that you could display on your web page in order to display the number of likes and follows and the like. Well, it uh, turns out that back in July, this service actually ceased to exist. And more recently, the service was apparently taken over and abused in order to redirect users to malicious websites. In order to include this counter on your website, all you needed to do was add the new share count JavaScript to your site, which was loaded from the newsharecount.com website. So this wasn't JavaScript that you downloaded and installed on your server. So once the domain changed hands, apparently the new owner or whoever is control of that site now swapped out the JavaScript and it will now redirect users to scams. Overall, the script doesn't seem to be super popular, something like 800 plus sites according to Sakuri, but it's probably just one of many similar scripts that people are including in their sites without due diligence and monitoring these scripts for any changes. Now, you can use sub-resource integrity, SRI, in order to protect yourself somewhat. Of course, that requires that you are actually being notified by the legitimate owner of the site you're loading scripts from whenever you need to update this particular feature. And Polish researcher Plasi Adamczyk released three different vulnerabilities affecting, I believe, about eight different models of D-Link routers. The first one is a simple directory traversal. The second one is passwords that are stored in plain text. So combine that with the first one, you can now read anybody's passwords. And the third one is a shell command injection. Sadly, among all the routers that are affected by this vulnerability, only two received patches so far. So if you're using a D-Link router, double check the list. And of course, one mitigation here is at least to not allow remote access from the internet to your router that should probably prevent the worst exploit scenarios here. But other than that, if your router is one of those that did not receive a patch, then probably the only thing you can do is toss it and buy a new router. Well, not exactly what we need, but there is a new way to gain persistence even beyond reboots to a compromised Windows system. The trick here is security identifiers, and in particular, the relative identifier that's being added at the end of the account security identifier. By manipulating registry keys, Colombian researcher Sebastian Castro figured out that he can actually change this relative identifier to one that identifies them as an administrator. What this means is that by modifying this identifier, for example, for a guest account, that now this guest account can gain remote access to the machine as administrator. Again, this is just the persistence part of the exploit. So the attacker first needs to have access to the system. So this doesn't mean that we have some new remote administrator vulnerability in Windows, but it is possible for an attacker that has access to the Windows system via some other vulnerability to use this particular issue to then gain persistence. Now, overall, it's not that difficult to spot if you have been a victim of this particular attack. All you have to look for is if the SID, in particular for your guest account, ends in 500. For a normal guest account, it should end in 501, which is the correct relative ID for guest accounts. 
Well, and then a quick update on the lip SSH vulnerability I talked about yesterday. It appears that some F5 systems, so load balancers like F5's Big IP, may include the vulnerable library as part of its built-in SSH server. So double check on that. Haven't been able to verify this at F5's website. If you have any sort of authoritative resource that would prove that, please let me know. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.